Hello everybody, Locati here. We are talking about uh, Thorns Shaman build. This has been a fairly popular build, I think, during the last few weeks. Um, it was much more popular early on, and then there was some nursing some changes, and so as a result of that, it kind of died off, and it started to become a little bit more popular again. Uh, there are a lot of little variations on this build. Most of them have the same base core mechanics. I am here running just a empowered 100 corrupted uh, echo here just wanting to move up the blessing that I think I have on this map and get a little bit better blessing on it uh, but as you can see I mean it runs fairly smoothly it's got good damage it's got fairly good survivability um, it's super easy to play and very casual doesn't have a lot of buttons and uh, really good at clearing you can move through pretty quick. This character is level 91, so nothing special. He's got like mid gear. I'd say he's got a fourth of the damage capabilities of the class, maybe half of the speed, maybe a third of the survivability. So there's a lot of room for improvement. But this build has a few small differences that we'll go over here in a minute as this little echo is complete. Um, Thorn Shaman itself I think is going to be a really great lead starter because of its survivability, its functionality at low tiers of gear, and its like top end capabilities. This class could easily farm 1,000 corrupted maps, could push up to probably 1,500 or 2,000 and really doesn't have too many issues from a playability standpoint with any other content in the game. You can see we delete that little exalt mage fairly easily. We delete bosses easily. It's got good AoE clear as well as really, really solid single target. So we'll get into first like some of the differences in my build. So every build that is running this long totem is probably going to have a skill setup that looks like this. Under Spriggan form, we go down and we take 5 out of 5 Iron Bark because it's armor and increased armor. It's, it's big survivability. This plays a huge role in our ability to take damage. We also come over and take a Terra's Bulwark 3 out of 5 because we are going to be spamming Thorn Shield a lot of the time. Uh, this gives us bonuses to our armor and increased armor while we have Thorn Shields active. And of course, that's per stack of Thorn Shield. Uh, because we like stacks of Thorn Shield, we go ahead and take Bulb Growth, which causes a uh, Thorn Shield to recast itself, again increasing the amount of stacks that we can have at any given point in time. Um, I'm taking Introspection here right now because it just makes it easier. Thorn Shield is always going to target me. I don't have to mouse over myself to target myself. But if you're playing with other people and you want to use Thorn Shield and a Terra's Blessing defensively, you can remove this point and stick it over here in a Terra's Bulwark just for some additional defenses. Coming over, we go all the way down. We take four points in Totem Warden for faster healing totem summons and longer healing totem duration. We take spiked totems, which makes our healing totems to get bonuses from our Thorn Totem tree over here. And then we take three points in Unbound Garden which gives us three additional max totems and always summons three totems whenever we summon our healing totem. So this allows us to spam out all of our totems very quickly. And so I mean, you can just drop all of them very quickly. I can have nine out of a time, they drop in like a second, maybe less, whenever you need to get them all out. And then they last for quite a while. On our skill tree as well, we come over and we take summon Spriggan. Um, this little asshole, really, the only thing we care about on him is this aura that he has. So we come down, we take five points in Spriggan's healing aura, which gives us an aura. We put all five points in for more healing from the aura. The healing is actually very, very good. Take three points in your healing aura, also grants allies additional spell damage. Your totems are your allies. And then we take the healing aura, grants additional base critical chance and critical avoidance. This just allows our totems to take more damage and deal more damage. Coming over here, we take Healing Aura, which increases the healing to the minions, which we don't care about because we just want to get down to the Healing Aura. Also grants allies additional dodge point per your points in attunement. This just adds some additional defenses to our totems. Now, if you wanted to, you could pull out these two points and stick them up here. If your Spriggan is dying too much, but your totems aren't dying. 
Um, up here we take health for this brigand and armor and physical resistance for this brigand because really we just want this guy to live. As long as he's alive, his aura is kicking out, we don't care what damage he does, you're going to spend more time than you really want to just telling him where to stand in boss fights so he doesn't get mashed by degens on the ground, things like that. Over here, Thorn Totem. This is where most of our damage is coming from. And there's a lot of little variants in this based on what gear level you're at. We'll talk about where I'm at. And so where I'm at, I want four points in Forest Expanse, which allows us to summon four maximum Thorn Totems, which, because of this point in the tree, means that the total amount of Totems are affected by the maximum amount of Totems that your Thorn Totems summon. So this is what pushes us up to nine. Uh, we take one point in Ancient Power so that we can get to two points in Impale, so that we can get to two points in Shred Armor, so that we can get to three points in Winged Thorns. Now, Winged Thorns is faster travel rate and range on your projectiles from your Thorn Totems. We need this because we also take three points in On Astral Winds. On Astral Winds gives a penalty to projectile speed, but a huge bonus to the spell damage. So you get three in here so that you can get three in here and it's just an overall huge boost to your damage. Now, we are crit based on these totems. So we do take four points in Lethal Thicket after taking one point in Torrent of Thorns to get to it, which pushes us down to Titan's Bane, which increases the damage of the Thorns versus rare and bosses. Also increases the cast speed and the accuracy, but they just fire one Thorn instead of a burst. So this is good, but we don't care anything about this double projectile chance because we're only getting one Thorn out anyway. The last one is Spriggan's Wrath, which Thorn Totems can pierce enemies up to a maximum. We just go ahead and throw one point in here just to get a little bit more AoE clear, but it's super solid AoE clear already anyway, so we don't need to put more than one point in here. But if you feel like your AoE clear is really lacking, we can pull out one point from Mount Astral Winds or one point from Forest Expanse and move it down here into Spriggan's Wrath to get more clear. Next we go to our Storm Totem. Now this one is super flexible. The only requirements are that you go four points in Lightning Raider, three points in Detect Current, Direct Current, and three points in Power Shunt. This is so that you can have the fastest, strongest crits available from your Storm Totem. Now, I've gone ahead and moved down and taken four points in Storm's Reach for larger area to assist with AoE clear, three points in Intensity for more damage, and three points in Static Build for more shock. So that we shock it so that we do more damage with the lightning damage that's coming out anyway. Now, all these points are flexible. You can take two points, three points out of here and move them down here for more intensity and then a chance to summon Thunder Totem. Um, or you can move it over here if you wanted to go down the Blizzard and the Frost range. These are the requirements here. You want 60% cast speed, 9% base crit chance, 90% critical strike multiplier. This is what's making your Storm Totem do good damage. Everything else is just kind of icing on the cake, and you can be a little bit more flexible with that as you build your character. Um, over here on Ateras, Ateras, we only care about a few things here. Absolutely have to have Rose Bloom. How the build works, you can't cast Ateras Blessing as a Spriggan without it. So we go two points in Conservation to one point in Rose Bloom. Um, I went ahead and took four points in overgrowth, so as I'm spamming out heals on myself, it'll also heal nearby targets. This is solid and helpful for keeping totems alive in sparrowly situations. Increased healing, absolute must. This is 100% increased healing. You're going to be doing a lot of healing with this, so it's very good. And then Ancestral Renewal. So this summons a healing totem when you heal yourself and you have high health, which you'll be doing a lot when we talk about why you'll be doing that later. Um, this is a healing totem that does not count towards your other healing totem count. So I summon my, my nine totems here. One, two, three, got my nine totems out, and then I spam myself and I get two more totems here. So we see I've got nine regular ones and two other ones. Uh, these auras appear to be different auras. So you get additional healing for having those out as well as your regular totems out. It's just more healing, more survivability, which you always want as much as you can get. Over here on Aterras, we also kick over to Efflorescence and then Regrowth. Same reason, we just want more healing. This heals for half of its value immediately and then half over four seconds. And this allows the Efflorescence to heal over time to heal again whenever Efflorescence heal expires. So it's just more healing. We're using uh, our Thorn Shield to proc some things. 
primarily this efflorescence and all the healing that comes with it. It allows us to stand in stuff that we normally wouldn't be able to stand in. Uh, purge, also a basic requirement. You need to be able to cleanse the elements. There's so many armor shred, physical shred, lightning shred, bleeds, dots, poisons, that will just melt your character if you don't take this. So basic requirement here, basic requirement here. All the healing is very good. And this other stuff is just kind of icing on the cake. I went ahead and threw a point in safeguard just for some additional poison resistance and some additional elemental resistance. Um, you can move this up or down based on your needs and your gear level. Like if you don't have a lot of elemental resistance, you don't have a belt that capture poison resistance, we can pull some points out of conservation, pull some points out of improved blessing, move them over here to make our character hit those requirements that we need them to hit so that they are successful. You could do the same thing down here, like if your totems don't need heals, you can take this out and throw it up here. So this is our five skills set up right here. Now our passives on the primalist tree, we go eight points in attunement for the attunement. Resistances are nice, but the attunement is going to buff our totems. That's what's doing damage. We need attunement. Um, we go ahead and throw one point into Gift of the Wilderness because it allows us to progress. You get five points in Hunter's Restoration because 10% increased health is really good. And we are going to be doing hits, so we'll get a little bit of heal off of that. Um, over here, Wisdom of the Wild is increased minion spell damage by 42%. It's very solid. And this character is only 91, so I've got nine points left to spend. This is a solid option for those next nine points. And, um, we'll have a build guide at, at, the, at the bottom of this so that you can see a maxed out build. Uh, but again, you have some flexibility with these last points. Five spell damage for your totems is really, really solid. Over here on Shaman is where the bulk of our skills go. You get eight points in here for attunement and penetration. This is a tremendous amount of damage. Do not skip over this. Down here, we get eight points in Sky Warrior. You only really need five in here. Get the increased cooldown for your Crow Storm if you do a Crow Storm version of this build. Um, but eight here is just solid, solid damage. Down here, we put one point in here just so that we can progress to these two nodes. We take this node for 25% increased cast speed while active totems. So we're going to be casting a lot, and we need to increase cast speed so that we can move more while we're casting, get more spells out. It's very, very good. Down here, we're going to take eight points in Fate Carver. It's 80% totem damage. It's just amazing. You absolutely want this. We're going to get five points in Ancestral Speed. This is one of the ways that we can gain haste for ourselves, and this increases our totem cast speed, which increases our totem's damage. So this is a really, really solid node. Don't skip over this one. Two points in Stormbringer only to allow us to get five points in Avatar of Thunder, which is 10 minion spell lightning damage. It's a lot of flat damage. Our minions have a lot of flat scaling. This is a huge bonus to our damage. Take eight points in Rune of Awe for the same thing. Minion spell damage plus 16. Our, our Thorn Totems and our Stormbringer both scale off of spell damage. Up here we take Protective Circle. Protective Circle is going to give us 15% resistance to elemental resistances, and physical per active totem, which means right now I've got nothing. As soon as I sell my totems, I am overcast. No problems at all. So this is a very important node. Now, if for some reason your gear just has capped you on everything, you can pull some points out of here, stick them else. But this is a really good one to have. Also frees up a lot of gear slots so that you can build your character better. Now over here we take one point in iron bark just so totems cannot be stuck. Most important thing here. Um, 20 totem health is good, 20 totem armor is good, but we don't need to put any more than one point here. We just want that totems cannot be stuck. Down here is another place that we can progress a little bit further so we can get some more damage out. This is attunement, one per point. We don't care about the mana regen, but one point of attunement is a lot of damage for our minions and that all adds up very, very quickly. Uh, the rest of these nodes we can pretty much ignore unless you want to focus more on the lightning damage that your storm totem is doing. This will help a lot with boss fights where the storm totem can be up for a long time, but I think you're better off just sticking it with attunement here or coming back over to the primalist tree and putting it over here so you get buffs for all your totems. Now our druid tree is a little bit more flexible. These are all just small ways to buff our character. We get some armor here, some endurance to be able to cap our endurance. Really only want to put five in here though. This gives our minion armor by 300. Very solid bonus to the minions to help keep them alive. 
a little bit of buffs for you. Down here we go five points in here for the 45 health, 15 mana. Also mana or rage cost on health is returned to you. So as we're spamming out our abilities, we're getting more healing. More healing is more survivability, and if you're dead, you can kill the bad guys. Over here, Claws of the Forest is increased minion physical damage, 49%. It's all we care about. Huge buff to the Thorn Titans. Down here, you got it. It's got attunement. Also happens to have strength, which is going to increase our armor a little bit, and five points in it gives us one to all attribute. As I level up, I'm going to bump that up to seven, but you want five in here as a minimum. Over here, Wind in the Leaves. This is increased minion attack and cast speed. We want minions to have cast speed. Also gives a little bit of a speed bonus to Spriggan. Helps you move him out of crap a little bit quicker as you maneuver him around boss degens and, and area damage and things like that. But uh, the minion attack and cast speed is really what we're going for here. So this is our trees that we're going to be looking at. Beastmaster gives us some flexibility if we have some survivability issues. Like if your gear isn't right there, don't go in Druid. Pull all this out. Come over in Beastmaster. Take your points in Earthside Strength. Take a point in whatever because you need some, some progress. So you take your points in Earthside Strength. We get our Boar's Heart right here. And we come over and we get four Sign Constitution. This is going to give us 15% damage reduction when we're hit by a melee attack, and this is going to give us an additional 15% damage reduction and some health regeneration when we're hit by a melee attack. These points right here will give you some huge survivability. So you want to go down this row. You'll have to take like one point in probably call of the pack because this is eight, and five is 13. So you're going to put two points over here. So eight and five and two, call of the pack gets you 12 health, which is good. And then up over here. So that gives us an alternative build if you're just feeling squishy or if you want to progress further and your damage is good but your survivability is not. Again, that's some flexibility between your Beast Master and your Druid Tree to get those points spent the way you need to spend them. Now from a playstyle on this, it is super straightforward. We're going to go ahead and grab an Arena Key, go over to the Arena. This is a great place to kind of play around with your build and, and do some things, see how things work and, and test things out with the target dummies. Uh, but our play style with this build is really straightforward. Our, our, our priority is to have all of our healing totems down. These are the attack based totems that you get from using the healing totem command that you have while in Spriggan form. And so having all those down, very important. You see they do a ton of damage attack very fast, they build up armor shred on there, they build up shock chance on there, they build the poison stacks on there. Very, very good to have all these up all the time. The next most important thing is that you have some binds out. Now, we'll talk about gear in a second, but you can either manually cast your vines, or as you can see, you can have an item that summons them randomly. But it is important that you have your vines out, they do hit, and more importantly, they give this build Rage, which we will talk about again when we're looking at the items here. So you want to have all of your totems out. You want to have all of your vines out. The next thing you want to make sure you're doing is filling with this. This is going to, this is your Thorn Shield. Every second that you have to cast something, you want to be casting a Thorn Shield. It's going to constantly heal you, keep you alive. It'll summon your Storm Totem like that, so you can have your Storm Totem out and have it doing damage and it's going to give you those extra armor stacks. You can see on our character sheet that we get up to 77, sometimes 80% damage reduction spamming our thorn shields. Huge survivability on that right there. Additionally, whenever there's a lot of targets around and we're spamming our thorn shield, we're going to have the opportunity to summon more totems. We are a totem build. We want as many totems as possible. So what are we going to do is spam our thorn shield, let that thorn shield hit the things that are around us, and then as that hits things that are around us, we're going to be able to summon just regular old thorn totems here. This is a result of our spined ornate idol of savagery. Now I've got a bad roll on this one, need to get a better one, um, but what it does is whenever you hit something and hitting with your thorn burst from your thorn shield counts as hitting it, you have a chance to summon Thorn Totems. Your Thorn Totem total does not count towards your Healing Totem total. So that's 
nine, two, one, six is a lot of totems to be having around. Your thorn totems and your healing totems do the exact same amount of damage. So you're going to see a huge spike in your damage whenever you can hit some targets with your thorn burst and get those regular old thorn totems out alongside all of your other totems. Now as far as gearing goes, there's a lot of different ways to gear this character. And so we'll start off with the ultimate in-game ideal sets of gear. You want to have a staff, and this one is the wrong type. We have over here the right type, but it doesn't have cast speed on it. So minion spell damage on a staff is important. And so ideally we want a shimmering shamanistic staff. We want it with minion spell damage, minion physical damage, and cast speed. I didn't get cast speed on this one, so we're shelving it. Still using this one. It's got cast speed, minion spell damage, and minion physical damage. Ideally, you want a T7 minion spell, T5 minion physical, T5 increased cast speed, or better on either of those if you can get it. This one has kind of mid rolls on it, so it's nothing fantastic, but it's definitely doing some work. Second thing that you're going to want in your build is armor with lots of spell damage for totems, minion spell damage on the armor. So you want the Great Wood Coat of the Ox. Uh, the Great Wood Coat is what gives you the minion spell damage. You also want health and health percent. And this one happens to have increased minion health on it, which is good, but it's not ideal. In the link, you'll be able to see ideal equipment. This is just kind of what we're working with right now. On your helmet, you want Summon Thorn Totem. Ideally, you want a T7 Summon Thorn Totem, so you can have plus 40 of Thorn Totems. Increased cast speed for totems is good, but there's a lot of options here um, on what you can have. This is also a great spot to get your necrotic resistance, which you don't really have a lot of access to, and you can get some void resistance here if you don't have it from somewhere else. Our resistances are mostly taken care of by our totems and our belt here. This belt is going to give you poison resistance and poison resistance while transformed, which is all the time, so this covers your poison resistance. It also gives us 19 rage for every 3 seconds in spriggan form, which allows us to be in spriggan form more often. It has 200 base armor on it, which is a huge layer of defense. And so if we can get one of these with better rolls on it and higher LP, this will be a really solid belt for you. Up here we've got Tears of the Forest equipped right now. We've got health on it. Ideally it would have health, hybrid health or, or some other stats that are helpful or minion damage. But this is what this one rolled right here. This one we're looking for is the two rage gained per second per summon bind. So this allows us to really spam out Thorn Shield because as long as we have these little vines summoned, we are getting 24 rage per second, which means we don't run out of rage. You can spam to your heart's content every ability you have. As long as our little vines are out, we can just summon and summon and summon. I'm just spamming totems here. It's crazy how much rage this generates. So, very, very good to have this Tears of the Forest. Down here we want rings with increased minion damage, health. Um, these both have endurance on them, which is nice, but not necessary. Obviously the throwing attack speed is trash on this, but this is just what we're working with on this character right now. Uh, gloves, we want Jorah's Obsession. I just haven't gotten one that I've been able to do anything with, but we'll go over that in the link below where you can see the ideal equipment there. Over here, a Terra's Path. A Terra's Path is absolutely critical. This allows you to summon your vines automatically as you're moving around, which gives you rage while you're moving around, which means you don't have to manage all of that nonsense. Also gives you additional increased move speed, and it has increased move speed on the boots, and it has 120 health. It's really great boots. Get these with some LP on them, slap some legendary potential, and get some good stats on it. Over here, Storm Carp Tester. This is what allows us to summon our Thorn Totem with births from our Thorn Shield. You have a percent chance to summon a Storm, storm Totem on an 8 second cooldown. Uh, it has a range of 12 to 12, so that they're all like this, a 12, 6 attunement. Um, it gives some additional shock chance for your totems, which allows them to do a little bit more damage with the lightning damage they're getting from the tree, and it also buffs your storm totems damage. Gives your lightning pin for your totems, which is a little bit of buff for the damage, and six more spell lightning damage for you and your totems, which again, more buffs for the totems. Really solid item to have here. 
Um, this is all the gear, basic gear that we're looking at as far as your, your setup goes for leveling process. This can get worse or better. For example, if you don't have Tears of the Forest left, you don't have the race generation from Summon Vine. You can replace that in your tree by taking some points out of On Astral Winds and sticking them up in Memories of Aterra. If you do that, every time your totems desummon or die, you get mana back. Rage back, should I say, um, which will offset the cost of summoning the totem and offset the cost for spamming your thorn shield out. If you don't have a legacy of the quiet forest and your tears of the forest isn't keeping up, you could do the same thing. If you don't have either of them, you're absolutely going to have to have it. So these these items right here allow us to move points out of Memories of Aterra into higher damage areas in our tree. Once we get those items, we can move those points around to make our character a little bit more powerful. As far as the Storm Carved Testament goes, if you don't have this yet, you can use any relic that buffs your minions. You just won't be able to summon the Storm Totem, so you won't need the Storm Totem tree. Now, you don't really have anything to put in there in place, so you'll just have a blank spot on your tree that you don't do anything with. So this is a fairly important item. But again, this really only comes up whenever we're in tougher fights that our Thorn Totems can't just massacre everything anyway. If you don't have a great staff yet, you can use one that has less rolls on it. It won't affect your skill tree. If you don't have plus two to summon Thorn Totems yet, for example, you can pull points out of On Astral Winds. If you need to, you can pull points out of Winged Thorns if you need to, until you get those points that you can put everything in here. You can also take one point out of Forested Expanse or two points out of Forested Expanse and just run a few less totems so you can keep some of those other skills in there. As far as idols go, I'm currently running increased minion critical strike chance, increased minion critical strike chance, critical strike chance for totems. These three get us to like 70, 75% crit for our totems. Solid setup. Get you almost a cap tremendous amounts of damage and really lets us maximize on this lethal thicket which gives us 20 percent increased damage additional 200 percent increased crit chance and helps us to get that crit cap as close as we can possibly get it now i'm also running this one and again ideally it would have 10 percent chance on hit to summon a thorn totem and 60 percent increase in your critical chance critical strike chance if this was a 60 and a 10, then we would have our crit cap, and we would also have our 10% chance of summoning a thorn totem. This is our driving factor for getting those thorn totems against things that live for a long time. Bosses almost doubles your DPS to have your thorn totems and your storm totem out in addition to your healing totems. So this is a really critical piece right here. You want to get the best rolls that you can on it. I'm filling in on the side over here with 48% uh, increased totem damage. And then these things just have minion physical damage on there and some other nonsense. Uh, these all can be much better. Again, the, the build guide below will show you your best in slot options. But you, this is just an example of how you build up to the character so that you can get to playing the game and enjoying the content. Now, if y'all have any questions about anything, feel free to hit me up on Twitch or on YouTube. Leave me any comments if you think I said something wrong about the build, or if you have any advice. We are always striving to improve. Uh, this has been a great game so far, and I'm super excited for the launch on the 21st. Uh, continuing to improve on this build. I've only been playing this character for three days now, so it's very young, but it is definitely very fun. And Thor Totem is absolutely what I'm going to be doing at launch. 